Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader .com. Uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. If you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for uh, tuning in. Uh, only thing I ask is if you could be so kind, uh, take a moment, just uh, click a like, uh, share, subscribe if you are brand new. And again, we'll uh, try to you know help you with uh, unbiased technical approach uh, just for the next day. Again, we don't go on beyond. Uh, that. So let's talk about the tape. If you guys remember, uh, there was no video Wednesday. Uh, excuse me. There was no, yeah, there was no video yet yesterday. Uh, market was just super dead. Did absolutely nothing. I figured, let me waste, you know, let me not waste 15 minutes of somebody's uh, day by talking about the obvious. So I kind of said, you know what? Let's wait for today's session, which is good because today uh, we had a lot more important information uh, that could help us out for the next day for for tomorrow's session. But if you guys remember, the last video I recorded was on Tuesday. And the one thing that I asked, uh, you know, kind of an open, honest, honest question was, well, the Dow, ever since it, it touched the $40,000 area, um, it's come in pretty much every single day. And if you guys remember on Tuesday's video, the Dow reclaimed the 50-day moving average on the close. And the question was, was the NASDAQ so strong that it was going to pull up the Dow or was it a possibility that Dow would lose the 50-day moving average and start pulling everything down? Well, we got it. We got our answer. We really did. So if you look at the Dow, uh, here was the Tuesday's video. We lost the 50-day moving average. And again, we talk about the severity of what happens when there is a negative bias on a lapse of the 50-day and also obviously the, the importance of the positivity when it, uh, it reclaims the 50-day. So the Dow... Uh, lost the 50-day moving average a couple of days ago, and it's had a really, really, you know, pretty aggressive move down. You're talking about nearly 2,000 points in a matter of a week and a half. That's a pretty big deal. But what was most important was what was happening in the trailing indexes, uh, the SPS, and especially uh, the the Nasdaq 100, which I um, am very, very. Um, it's a very, very important to me. So. If you guys remember, we had uh, an incredibly aggressive reversal last Thursday, right? Last Thursday, uh, there was hawkish comments coming out of uh, the Fed minutes, and we had a really disgusting, nasty reversal. And what happened was we talked about it. That was going to be the line in the sand. So yesterday, and we'll use the spies as a proxy instead of the SPX, but yesterday we lost, right? Here's last Thursday's reversal. Uh, we lost the last. We lost the reversal yesterday, and we had a pretty aggressive move down today in the S and P. Uh, the, it's not going to come across really crazy on the scoreboard, only down six tenths of a percent. But the reversal from top to bottom was was pretty aggressive. And the question was: Was the Nasdaq going to be next? Right, and we got our answer uh, pretty quickly today uh, in the afternoon. We lost last Thursday's reversal. Uh, this four uh, four fifty one eighty five level uh, Nasdaq traded down to four fifty, so that's going to be a very very important line in the sand going into tomorrow. Not macro wise. Let's not you know I don't want to lose uh, focus on the big picture. You, if you look at the big picture, you know look look how great this rally has been. So we're not talking about if we lose today's channels tomorrow we're going to go back to zero. No no again we trade from day to day. Uh, tomorrow is the only important thing. Uh, only important. A uh, part of my of my day. I don't care about next week, next month, uh, next Columbus Day, next Groundhog's Day. It's all about tomorrow. So if you look at the big picture, right, the big picture of this rally, tremendous rally. Bulls did an incredible job. And the, the most important part is you're always like we talked about in past videos. No matter how strong the market is, the further you are away from the 50-day moving average, the higher probability you will get a pull at some point. This is the same way we got a pull uh, last Thursday, and now we got a pull today. Now, the question is, what happens next, right? Can the bulls negate uh, the same way you know they, they negated last Thursday and start rallying back tomorrow? Sure, why not? We're in a bull market. That's the whole point. But now that we have a definitive line in the sand, 
that we've today's engulfing candle took out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? Ten days. You're talking about two weeks worth of buying. Is it important that if we do start losing today's channel and tomorrow, can we get further selling? And the and the answer to that is absolutely. So let's watch, right, guys? Let's watch that 450 20 level. Uh, on uh, the QQQs for tomorrow, especially if you guys are trading on the index side, there could be a, a, a there could be a potential tradable move down uh, into this rising uh, 20 day support, roughly around 447, 448. So again, it's not supposed to be even if we can you know even if we get below today's channel tomorrow, it's not supposed to be a move that's down 10 points. It's just literally a tradable move, a couple of bucks into rising uh, support. The more important part is in the individual equities. And if you look at the individual equities, you'll see there's a lot of softness starting to show its hand, right? Um, Amazon has been weak now for a while, right? For a while. Uh, this is now, you know, day two below the 50 day moving average. The only reason it got saved today uh, is it hit the 65 day EMA, which uh, we recently started in the last month and a half, two months to track. It's a really, really good uh, supply and demand zone. In this case, uh, it's the demand zone. You know, let's watch Amazon tomorrow. You know, what happens if the Qs take out today's range and get hit for another couple of points? Well, watch Amazon tomorrow. If it starts losing back uh, the 65-day moving average, this thing has room to go down. Uh, look at Meta, right? Look at Meta today. Meta, you know, again, was one of the very few names that are still below the 50-day moving average. Today, it tested right back to its rising support. But what happens if it loses that rising support tomorrow, right? That's the point, to be ready on both sides. So if Meta starts losing a rising support tomorrow, and I believe this is the 100-day SMA, yeah, of course, it can go lower. So let's watch that as well. Uh, look at Microsoft, right? Softy had an ugly reversal today. And the reason why it had an ugly reversal today, uh, if you look at last night's earnings, pretty bad, right? You had CRM got absolutely smoked, uh, really, really smoked. And as you can imagine, it took down software with it. Uh, it took down uh, cloud space, everything in, in return. But Microsoft, right? What if there's a day two sell-off in these software stocks? You know, watch Microsoft. Microsoft closed right underneath the 50-day moving average, right? It's kind of, the charts kind of speak for themselves here. So the question is, can they confirm? But the big one going into tomorrow, and I know, I know, I know, it'll never go down. I know. If you're sensitive, please leave the room. If you're a brand new trader and you you love the stock, please leave the room. It has to be said. Ready? I'll, I'll give you guys one minute to leave. All right, one second to leave. All right, I'm assuming you're gone. So look, here's where here's where the line in the sand is going to be played out tomorrow. Okay. Um, NVIDIA has had an incredible, an epic, absolutely epic run uh, in the last just couple of weeks. You know, a couple of weeks, came out with earnings, absolutely phenomenal. Are they coming for nonstop June, July, 1,200 calls? Absolutely, 100%. These are, you know, these are irrefutable, unrefutable, whatever the hell you say, Right. These are these are facts that are on the tape. The option flow in this in the stock has been out of its mind. Here is where I pose a technical question versus an emotional question, right? Now let's say, for example, the market rallies tomorrow, everything is good. The, the video rallies back 20, 30 points tomorrow, everything is great. But what happens if the Qs do lose today's range tomorrow, right? Nothing is going to be saved. Keep this in mind. Also, NVIDIA stopped today right at the five-day support. Now, why is the five-day support important, especially if you're a brand new trader? The five-day is support is support support important uh, to me because it is the short-term sentiment. So if this whoever has control of the five-day moving average has a really, really good chance of going in that direction. So NVIDIA stopped perfectly right at the five-day moving average. Let's say tomorrow for shits and giggles, right? We lose that five-day, this thing could, could get hit. Because remember, uh, the next support on this thing is, is filling in this gap here uh, into this 1063 level. And if it really gets exaggerated, who knows? Is it possible it gets to the next support of 1021? Again, I'm just putting it out there 
for everybody to be prepared, right? I'm always prepared on both sides of the market. Uh, when the market is bullish, I am super bullish. When the market starts losing some levels and I have to be prepared to trade on both sides, yes, I'm going to be very, very prepared. And as much as I love NVIDIA, I've been trading NVIDIA now uh, on balances this, that, and the third just in the last couple of weeks since it came out of earnings. Uh, but, you know, again, the chart is the chart. The chart doesn't care about your opinion. The chart doesn't care about your entry. The chart doesn't care about where you think the stock is going to be uh, a year from now, a week from now, Monday or Tuesday. The chart cares what you're going to, where what's going to happen tomorrow. And if we do confirm the five-day moving average, that means these three-day channel here, where you can see how it stopped perfectly at the linear regression line, uh, crossed with the five-day moving average. If the linear gets lost and the five-day gets confirmed, then yes, we will have. A trade will move down. How big the move down is going to be, your guess is as good as mine. I'm not a fortune teller, but again, it's our job to be prepared on both sides of the market. Let me give you guys some uh, upside plays as well, not just downside. There's some um, nice charts uh, to the upside as well. Look at ENVX. You guys remember ENVX? We had the pivot on ENVX. I think it was last week. I think it was like, what was it? 9, 980, right? Not, was it 980? 1080, excuse me, 1080, right? It had a nice push to this 1140s area. You see how it got rejected here back to back days? Keep an eye on ENVX. If this thing starts waking up tomorrow, who knows? Maybe this thing can go on a run. Uh, look at Rivian. I hate to say it, but Rivian is, does not look horrible, right? Rivian does not look bad. It's coming off a bottom channel here. Again, also got rejected on the 64 day uh, EMA. Let's watch this thing, right? In case the market rallies, stocks, you know, I, I really like setups that are coming uh, off the bottom. And if it could reclaim back the 65 day, who knows? Maybe Rivian uh, could wake up as well. Uh, good solid day today. Right? I think it's the best way of saying really good morning today. Um, you know, really good morning today. You had some longs, you had some shorts, Tesla woke up. And by the way, let me say this the nicest way I can, right? I see people talking about Tesla 200, Tesla 300, Tesla 400. Could Tesla sustain a rally for more than 12 seconds? Is it too much to ask for? Can the stock actually get out of a range that's been stuck in for four or five months before we start talking about two, three, 400 points? Again, it's giving us good ranges. We're taking advantage of the ranges, but enough with the predictions, right? The damn thing has been stuck in a channel for four or five months. Every single time it has the ability to actually get above the channel, it gets stuck and gets rejected. Every single time it looks like it's about to break down, they save it and the stock starts going higher. So before we start throwing the 200 per rate, 300 per rate, 500 per rate, can it at least get above supply, right? And it keeps on demonstrating over and over again that it just cannot live with prosperity. So until it starts living with prosperity, I would advise everybody to keep their predictions of what they, they're going to happen five years from now. We're just trying to get this thing over supply, you know, when we can, right? If it doesn't, it doesn't. But the point is, you know, you're, you're wasting your breath for absolutely no reason. The stock is telling you it's going nowhere very fast. And unfortunately, today was another day that it looked great. We had a great train on the upside and it just died. It just absolutely died to the vine. So let's talk about today's channels. Uh, Robin Hood, great move today. Really nice move today. Uh, 2120. Uh, needs to build. Those are the highs from last week. Uh, also pre-market. Uh, look at Robinhood. Beautiful, beautiful move today. This morning was really good. So Robinhood took out the 2120, uh, put up about a you know, over a little over a dollar move on a $20 stock. That's pretty damn good. Uh, Robinhood was nice. Hims went crazy. Uh, Hims uh, 2011 needs to build. Again, it's been on a really, really great run. Uh, so Hims took out the 21. Uh, 2020 traded all the way up to 2144. Again, this is the highest close in this whole formation. Uh, you have Microsoft, obviously, never got above 431. Uh, Autodesk again to play on on the um, on the CRM earnings. 206 held three times. Obviously, if it gets below, it can flush. Here was Autodesk. Right, they took out the 206 level, took out this whole range. Stock closed pretty much at the lows of the day, uh, broke under uh, 200. So, good job for all you guys who traded that. Uh, and 
Tesla was good. You know, Tesla was good. Um, you know, 179, 75, and 180, which was the May 24th highs. Need to confirm. I got long. My highest sale was in the 8250s. I thought there was a shot we can get to uh, 8330s. Just missed that. But again, uh, nevertheless, pretty good trade. But that's my point, guys. It's just stuck in this channel here. You know, I don't care at this point, and I've been saying this for weeks, I don't care which way it breaks. If it closes below the 50-day moving average, I will be short. If it closes above uh, the highs from last week, I will be long. But everything in between is just cash flow, dollar, two dollars, three dollars until it finally uh, gets above supply. And uh, Coinbase, nice little pop on Coinbase, nothing crazy, uh, but 242.79 needs to build. Uh, you know, put up about a three, four dollar move, nothing crazy. So trended all the way up to uh, 48 uh, 80s uh, before it reversed. So that's it, guys. That's it. Tomorrow uh, we have PCE out at 8:30. Uh, after the close, you got Dell coming out with not so great earnings, getting hit. Costco came out with earnings after the close, nothing special. Uh, down a little bit. Uh, the big earnings, you know, the big earnings last night was was Kohl's. Was it this morning? Kohl's took a major hit this morning, major major hit. It really really shows you uh, the, again the continuation of the lack of spending overall. Uh, in the retail space. But overall, uh, market continues to be good. But, and this is the most important part for any single trader out there, make sure you are prepared on both sides of the market, especially if the queues do confirm and get below that 450 level. There's a lot of names that we just spoke about that has great value to the downside tomorrow. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.